Marco Severino here at Flow Design Architects, one of the principals. We're going to continue today to discuss uh, our video series um, zoning requirements. Uh, in this class, we're going to focus in the high restrictions. Um, as you already know, if you follow the videos that we already um, have uh, showing YouTube, we went into detail to talk about zoning districts, setbacks, FAR or floor area ratio uh, and lock coverage and the difference between FAR and the lock coverage. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just refer to the video that we previously recorded just to get a little bit more sense of where we are within this series. So um, let's jump in into the high restrictions. Um, something that we always get questions um, when we meet clients is uh, how high can I go with, um, within my district? And that's something that we, um, we always like to uh, express to the clients, like let's go into the zoning requirements and see in which district you are located. Because for example, if you are in an area in Lynn, Massachusetts, where you are, uh, let's say in R1 or residential district one, might be different than if you are in a, uh, let's say a, a commercial uh, district or C1 or B1, um, because it depends. So the scale of the buildings are different based on the district that you are located. So it's very important that you always refer to your zoning district in which zoning you are located in order to find the information about high restrictions. Very, very important. So I recommend clients to always, always, always go back to um, your zoning district it, uh, to understand what your limitations are. So after you locate in which district you are located, they are going to specify, oh, it is 25, uh, 25 feet um, high max, or it is 35 feet, or 50 feet, 60 feet, etc. So it's important for you to understand that relationship and how high you can go within your district. So after you understand how high you can go, then it's very important that you look into your zoning bylaws to understand the difference between height and stories. That's very, very important because what happens is you might have a height max of 35 feet, but the stories might be completely different. It might be 2.5 stories max it might be three stories max. So now let's go deep into what that means in terms of you as a developer or somebody who buy this house and are trying to understand like, okay, how can I um, increase the height of my house? Let's say you have, a, let's say you have a one level house, for example. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see my text, but let's say, you know, you have a first floor. This, I cannot really see it. Let's say this is your first floor and then you have an unfinished attic. And let's say this um, space is about, let's say, 15 feet. 15 feet from the ground. But you are located in a district that is... 2.5 um, stories uh, max. What that means is that you can have a first floor, a second floor in an attic space. And typically the 0.5, what that means is that the attic space, let's say you have 1,000 square feet. Um, let's say you have 1,000 uh, square feet on the second floor. So let's say this is the second floor. Uh, the point five, what that means is that the attic, you can only finish, and when we mean about finish a space, we're talking about spaces that are conditioning, like, meaning like 
you have, let's say, a family room or you have like a bathroom, uh, those spaces are not included. Uh, you need to look into your zoning, but um, storage areas are not included into finished space. Uh, so it, always go back to your zoning requirement to understand what you can actually do within that space. But going back to it, so if you are on the second floor and your second floor is, let's say, a thousand square feet, if your requirement is that the max store is 2.5 stories, so that means the attic space, you can only finish 500 square feet of that, which is 0.5, let's say this is 0.5 stories. Um, so that's what that means. So it's, it's important for you to understand the high relationship and what your requirements are in terms of stories and height. So going back to this example, if your house is a single home and you have 1.5 stories, that means that you can easily go into another story and add an attic, similar to what we're showing in this diagram. So very important for you to really look into this because this relationship of height and stories it, it, they correlate. So um, some cities like, and they spe specifically said 35 feet, but they don't tell you the stories. What that means is that if you go back, let's say you have a 35 feet limit. If this is 35 feet, you could potentially subdivide this building in, let's say, uh, let's say each floor, it's, t uh, let's say nine feet, nine feet. Of course, I'm just showing lines, but you know the, the floor assembly um, might vary depending on your uh, construction type. So let's say nine feet, nine feet, that's 18. nine feet, so 18, so let's say the floor assembly is a foot. So you will hit be 10 feet, um, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. And then let's say you decide to go with a gable roof for the remaining to give you that 35 feet. So. In other words, you have one, two, three and a half stories. If in your district, they don't specify the amount of stories that are allowed. Um, it's very important for you to kind of get a sense of also what your neighborhood uh, is telling you. Sometimes we, uh, your, your district might tell you, uh, you your max is 35 feet. But if you look around your neighborhood and all your houses are, let's say 25 feet, most likely, it's, it's better if you actually look at what the neighborhood feels like uh, in order so, for people to kind of don't feel disturbed with what you are trying to do in the future. So very important that you pay attention to the height and how it relates to your stories um, requirements because it's, it, they, uh, as I mentioned before, they actually correlate to each other. So uh, very, very important. Another thing I do want to mention about high restrictions is that it's very different uh, depending the lot that you are that, that your building is located at, um, and you always need to go into your zoning bylaws in order to understand um, what those limitations are. So, for example, if you have a, a flat, uh, a considerably flat um, site, in, like in this case, like that line, just represent that your uh, your law is flat, the high limitations might be very different than if you are in a, a slope site. So some, um, th this is where the concept of stories and law kind of mirror each other. So let's say you are in a, you have a walkout basement. Let's say this is your basement and this is your first floor and this is your attic. Let's say that's the case. And the max height, let's say, is 35 feet. Now, when, when the zoning bylaws specify your height, they're referring from the 
ground level into the highest point of your building, typically the ridge of the roof. But in a case where the, uh, a side of your law is higher than the other, the rule of thumb is that you take half of the height between the highest point and the lowest point. So let's say in this case, if this relationship is, let's say this relationship is 10 feet. So you will get the middle ground, which is five feet, five feet and five feet. And you will start your height from the middle point of that. So in this case, let's say this is 10 feet, this is five feet. And let's say the relationship of that, uh, five feet, and let's say it's two more feet from the ground, so let's say seven, seven feet. What that means is that your actual height for your building, it's not, let's say this is two feet, it's not from here. This is not your right height. It's actually from the center line of what we just discussed previously. So if you add up, um, that's 5, 15, 22 feet. 22, that's your actual height versus 2, 12, 17, versus 17 feet. You can see the difference here because if you are in a lot where it slopes and you argue with the building inspector and you are like, oh no, my, my house is only 17 feet, uh, from the ground, but then the building inspector will tell you, wait, remember that you are in a slope and you have a walkout basement outside. So your height is actually to the center of the highest point and the lowest point within your law. Um, so these ones are pretty basic items for you to kind of understand and, and get uh, aware of where your law is located, uh, how your law is, um, your building is placed within your law and the relationship of how that connects with your requirements with the height and stories. Um, so I hope this video is helpful. Um, any questions, feel free to follow up the previous videos uh, so you can get a sense of the other items that we discussed, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.